Hello and welcome to the Manufactured Home Show, everybody. My name is Mike. The live webcast is on. <laughs> the big news today is Arnold Schwarzenegger. But before we get to that, let's plug our great sponsor, ManufacturedHomeMart.com, the premier online store for manufactured housing. Yes, that's right. Everybody go there after the webcast. ManufacturedHomeMart.com. Buy, sell, rent manufactured homes. You professionals out there, it's time to make the change to ManufacturedHomeMart.com. This is where the future is at. Good morning. Hmm. Once again, if you hear a little soundtrack in the background, that, that would be not in your mind. It's real. It's in the background. Uh, let's get right to the headlines, okay? Because what an interesting day we have on tap. So much going on. This time the video should work. Arnold, father to love child. Can you believe this? Watch this. Listen to this, I should say. Sorry. New revelations in the breakup of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver. The Los Angeles Times is reporting Schwarzenegger and Shriver separated after the former governor revealed he had fathered a child with a member of their household staff. The newspaper <laughs> says the child was born more than a decade ago. Schwarzenegger issued a statement Monday explaining that he told Shriver about the child after he left the governor's office earlier this year. The statement says, there are no excuses, and I take full responsibility for the hurt I have caused. The couple announced in a joint statement earlier this month that they had separated after 25 years of marriage. Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. Go Associated Press, that's some good reporting. Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? That's big news. Arnold, I always knew he was up to no good over there. <laughs> that is, I mean, that is embarrassing. I mean, Maria Shriver, my heart goes out to this woman. I don't know if she, to me, she seemed like a dutiful wife and just that she did her thing, you know, but the, uh, unbelievable, <laughs> very shocking stuff. Shocking. Now, this is not quite as shocking, but MSNBC, the Queen of England, has decided that she's gonna, she is the first British monarch to set foot on Irish soil. This is unbelievable. And there was a bomb scare. I don't know what the Queen Mother is doing. It is absolutely insane. I was, uh, I was bothering my wife this morning with my English accent. So, um, as we do this segment of the Manufactured Home Show today, I think I will put on my British accent for you. So here we go. <laughs> msnbc.com Security is remarkably high in Dublin, Ireland this morning where Queen Elizabeth II is making an historic visit. You see her right there. Yay! And just hours before her arrival, police found a small bomb on a bus on the outskirts of the city. NBC's John Yang is in Dublin. What are you detail. doing? John, good morning to you. Why? Good morning, Matt. You see Queen Elizabeth I uh, dressed in Irish green, the first royal uh, British monarch <laughs> to set foot on Republic of Ireland soil, independent Ireland soil, ever. This despite the discovery of that bomb on a bus headed to Dublin uh, in Maynooth and County Kildare, about 15 miles west of Dublin. Officials detonated that bomb safely this morning. Uh, this is uh, in the wake of uh, dissidents who uh, want Britain out of Northern Ireland, saying that the Queen would be a fair target while she's here on Irish soil. So as you say, there is a massive security presence 8,000 national police, 2,000 military personnel, a bigger presence even that's planned next week when President Obama visits. Matt? I don't know what is going on with the Queen Mother. Doesn't she, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my British accent. Doesn't she, doesn't she know it's dangerous to go over there? Come on now. Okay, we're not doing, we're not doing the calls in, by the way. Uh, so I, uh, we'll bring that back, I promise. For right now, we're just doing a skipping around to some headlines. I'm going to move over to some local stuff now, get away from the national world news. Once again, good morning, wherever you are. I will bring the call in back, I promise. Do not despair. AZCentral.com uh, this morning. This, this is very interesting political news here. And uh, Arizona aims to build border fence. If you want to read this article, you should. I am going to read through part of this to share with you because it is absolutely amazing. Basically, 
uh, there's a work in progress here where they're going to finish building the fence. Now, let me read you a little bit, and then I'll make a little commentary. Arizona no longer has to wait for the federal government to finish building a fence along the Mexico border. A new law that goes into effect July 20th allows the state to build the fence itself as long as it can raise enough private donations and persuade public and private landowners to let them do it on their property. Now, state officials have to figure out how to get it done. No other state has tried such a tactic. Senative, Senator Steve Smith, who sponsored the legislation, will meet with Governor Jan Brewer's staff today to start discussing logistics. Uh, it goes on to talk about the border. Uh, there's some talk about some other things. Once again, azcentral.com. Um, but anyway, th this is... Uh, this is the, let me get towards the bottom because this is the funniest part. According to a 2009 U.S. Government Accountability Office report, it has cost the federal government about $3 million a mile to build the type of fence that would keep pedestrians out. But Smith said Arizona's final cost would depend on what kind of offense is needed and whether the state can get private companies to donate some of the construction supplies. State lawmakers also uh, have said they will save some money by using inmate labor to build the fence. This opens up so many can of worms. And by the way, I also love the people. Many publications, you can post a comment. <laughs> and I love the people, by the way. Props to the people making all this commentary. They're very, very funny. So let me chime in my two cents about this. Arizona, many times our leadership shows how insane they are. This would be another example of that. Um, but I'm going to appeal to the sanity of the people here anyway. Please do not donate to this. Building a fence is not going to be the answer. We're wasting time. Now, if you want my answer, send me an email or a tweet. I'll solve the whole problem for you. Now, remember, there's other ways to get around a fence, you know. If you put up a fence, that doesn't mean that it's foolproof. <laughs> I can say, again, I'll send you the long explanation, but the people that try to get across the border, they really want to get across the border, so they'll tunnel under it. I, I swear to God, they'll probably catapult the people over and bust out a parachute or helicopter them over. The people are building a fence is not going to do it. I had a couple of great suggestions. First of all, we could transfer the entire Great Wall of China, or part of the Great Wall of China. We could do that boom, boom on the border of Arizona. That would that would be great. Let's try to do that. Or how about this? We'll set up a whole chain of single wide manufactured homes all across the, one after another all across the 370 miles of Arizona border and then we'll put people in those homes with shotguns and they could sit out there in the backyard and wait how about that how would that be <laughs> listen a fence is not gonna do it I don't care how high if it's the Great Wall of China or if it's a row of single wides for 370 miles. They'll go under, over, around, whatever they gotta do. The most appropriate thing to do is to solve the, get some immigration legislation, legislation. Immig wow, that's hard to say. Immigration legislation. We need to get some of that going. Forget about the fence, Senator Steve Smith, Republican from Maricopa County, please. Please just stop with the stop the madness, okay? Um, all right, quickly, because I um, I really want to go to this. This is this is inspired me today. Uh, take this from mhmsm.com, but the report actually is from Blunt Today. Reports that Jim and Kay Clayton have made a donation of five hundred thousand dollars through the Clayton Family Foundation to the Second Harvest Food Bank in Maryville, Tennessee. 
where Clayton Homes and Clayton Bank Corp are headquartered. The funds will be used to renovate a warehouse Second Harvest is buying for a food bank. The 78,000 square foot building will serve an 18 county region. Second Harvest statistics says the program feeds 158,000 people. Jim Clayton is the founder of Clayton Homes and Clayton Bank Corp. Major props. Golf clap of the day definitely goes to uh, uh, Jim and Kay Clayton. Uh, the, the obviously uh, the once uh, owner of Clayton Homes. I, I just absolutely uh, think this is wonderful, wonderful, major props, big, big time. Uh, I know these folks have a lot of money, but $500,000 donation, that is big cash. That is philanthropy at its best. Way to go, Mr. and Mrs. Clayton. Absolutely wonderful. Shows something from the manufactured housing industry. I love it. Anyway, um, listen, that's all the time I'm going to have. I do promise to bring back the phones at one time. Um, thanks for watching. Remember our sponsor, ManufacturedHomeMart.com. If you need to buy, if you need to sell uh, Manufactured Home, if you're in the business, you belong on ManufacturedHomeMart.com. Everybody, we'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday show. More fun and excitement. Thank you so much. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.